Easter. Amen. After these long 40 days, the church gives us the three days of the trial to chew on the passion of Christ. Then he rests his three days in the tomb, and we have this vigil mass, waiting up into the night for the bridegroom to return. In our vigil tonight, the church gives us readings from across the span of salvation history, trying to remind us that there is a larger story going on in our own lives. My life is part of a larger story, but that larger story is part of an even larger story. The good news that we hear this evening comes not only from the gospel, but also from all of the readings. The church gives us the reading of creation, that God makes the world good out of an act of love. Of nonviolent willing, he speaks the world into being. It takes no special effort for God to make the world, but he made it good. But then something goes awry, something goes wrong, and sin enters into the world, along with it the corruption that we experience that makes life miserable from time to time. The Pharisees once asked Jesus about divorce, and Jesus' response was that Moses gave you permission to divorce because of your hardness of hearts. But in the beginning, it was not so. In the beginning, it was not so. A few simple words, but it had Pope St. John Paul II reflecting for years and what it meant for in the beginning it not to be so. The sin for which Jesus came into the world and died and suffered to relieve us from was not always so. It entered into the world at one point, and it will be eradicated at another point. Death and sorrow came with sin, and with the resurrection of Jesus, eternal life now is opened to all of us who believe. Resurrected from the tomb, you can wonder why the apostles didn't initially believe the women who went to the tomb. Matthew's gospel makes it fairly clear. They come back with a startling story. As strange as it would have been for them simply to arrive and the stone be rolled away and see an empty tomb, that would have been striking. But instead, they arrive and this powerful sign happens. An earthquake, lightning flashes across the sky, and a great angel rolls back the tomb and sits on the stone. And he invites them, look inside. See that the one who was crucified is not there. And he goes before you to Galilee. The apostles had two major messages when they went to evangelize. When they left the upper room at Pentecost and went to convert the world, two messages. The kingdom of God is at hand, something the Jewish people were waiting for. And Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Brothers and sisters, it is easy for that to lose its weight because we are so used to the reality our own history, our story, that Jesus was born, suffered, died, and was resurrected. It becomes so ordinary, so common in our life, that the fact that a human being who is clearly dead came back to life. Brothers and sisters, if this happened at one of the funerals you and I went to, we would certainly tell the story, if not be completely shocked and flabbergasted as we experienced somebody rising from the dead. 
But Jesus doesn't just rise from the dead. We'll hear over the course of the next several weeks. He appeared alive again, again and again. He did things he had not done in his previous life. Walks through the walls. And he comes back to the apostles. And he gives them this message. Go out to the corners of the earth. Make disciples. Teach them to follow my ways. And baptize them. You and I were baptized into life with Jesus. Now we have only to follow him. To take on this call to be missionary. Because the kingdom of God is still at hand. And Jesus Christ is still risen from the dead. And that is good news that our world so desperately needs. In the face of this coronavirus pandemic, which I know everyone is tired of hearing about. I know at this point, three weeks into isolation, you are tired of looking at the inside walls of your own house and would just like to go somewhere else. But even in the midst of this isolation and this pandemic, the kingdom of God is at hand, and Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And you may be asking yourself, well, where is it? I don't, I don't see it. In fact, we, we've been suffering more than we usually have. Brothers and sisters, to that I can only say this. The kingdom of God is in you. Is in me. It is here. All of us, everywhere. And Jesus is still risen from the dead. Brothers and sisters, wherever you are, Jesus is there too. Wherever you are, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. And there, you have a relationship with God who brings new life will guide you and lead. Even as we are separated from one another and we have to live in this isolation, the kingdom of God is still at hand. And even though we cannot go out, we are still called to be missionary, to go and to teach, to baptize. We may not be able to go out into the world and bring people to Christ in the way that we are used to. But we may certainly pray, pray, to spend even hours in prayer, asking the Lord for deliverance, asking the Lord for healing, and most importantly, asking the Lord for the salvation of souls and the conversion of sinners, the release of prisoners, the release of those who are suffering, and for the coming of his second return. Brothers and sisters, separated though we may be, we can still be missionary. We can still be church. And the sacrifices of our sufferings will be rewarded, not only with many new souls coming to Christ, not only with many new people converted, not only with many sinners returning to the Lord, but with great reward in heaven. Do not give up. Do not despair. I am proud of you, and God is as well.